Welcome back to the second part of the Chocolate Lab tutorial. I'm just going to keep working on um, going across the dog's head right now. Um, I'm putting um, a thick layer of white Prismacolor pencil down as my first layer here on this section. Just really pushing that in there to get a really good layer of wax down. Once I get that, I'm going to go in with some of the Burnt Sienna Prismacolor, and you can tell I'm not pushing quite so hard. I'm a little further back on the barrel of the pencil, and I'm just putting a um, layer of the color of the Burnt Sienna over that white to help build up the color of the um, dog's coat in this section. I'm just using the side of the pencil here um, instead of the, the tip of the point um, so that I can put on a light layer of even color. And now I'm putting on a little bit more of the, um, oh, I'm adding in some white into a section where I didn't get um, a good layer of wax down. I'm just kind of in, um, putting more wax down in a different area. So now I'm taking the black Prisma color and I'm just darkening up the edge of um, this really dark area here as it transitions over into the rest of the section that I'm drawing. I'm using, I was using a little bit more pressure. Now I've kind of backed up on the tip of the barrel and using lighter pressure. Now I'm using the um, Prismacolor Dark Brown to go in and um, put some more color down over that Burnt Sienna and the white, um, the little bit of black. Um, these are all just light layers over that white wax to um, build up the, that coat color to something like I want before I start putting in any kind of detail work. I'm doing a lot of looking at the reference photo, noticing where it's darker, um, where you know it's a little bit darker in one section, lighter in another section, and um, varying the pressure on my pencil in order to create those differences in value. So now I'm going in and blending um, some of this out with the uh, white Prisma color using heavy pressure to uh, smush all of the colors together and uh, get them nice and pushed in, the pigments nice and pushed into the fibers of the paper. Now I'm going in with a little bit of the orange Prismacolor just to um, warm up this area. Just a real light layer of the orange in there to bring some of those redder tones out. Now I'm going to use the um, Polychromos Light Ultramarine Blue to uh, tone down a little bit of that orange so it's not 
quite so saturated, um, but still keep a little bit of the warmth of it. And using the, the white Prismacolor now to, um, with heavy, heavier pressure to um, burnish everything and blend the colors together. Now remember, in order to get away, be able to get away with this much burnishing, you need to be working on a really heavy duty paper like Fabriano Artistico. Um, you would not be able to do this amount of burnishing on um, like a, a Bristol vellum or, or some other type of smooth paper. Here I've got, um, looks like the black Prismacolor and again I'm just like um, kind of paying attention to the edges on the side of the head as it goes back into that recessed area um, just making it look a little bit more rounded by softening that edge up some Can't quite tell if that's the black or the um, dark brown Prismacolor. It's one of them. But either way, what I'm doing is just laying down some value there on the edge of the, the dog's head um, as the cheek turns away from the light. And that just makes that softens the edge and makes it look a little bit more rounded. I'm starting to put in some of the values around the eye. I'm working my way down the cheekbone. I'm being a little bit more careful at this point with my pencil strokes. I'm paying attention to the direction of the fur um, as these details are going to show up. Oh, that was the dark brown. Now I've, cut, I've brought in the black now. So this is the black Prisma color, and again, just building up the value on that um, side of the cheek. Now I've got the Prismacolor Burnt Sienna. I'm using it to add in details of the, the fur, the little fur, the like I'm um, creating the fur texture, the little pieces of hair. So I'm using short choppy strokes for um, because the hair on this dog is very short. Now I've got, um, again, hard to tell if that is the black. I think that's the black. Just a couple little strokes of there. Now I've got the polychromos. I believe that's the walnut brown. Um, using this with a nice sharp point to put in um, little uh, precise strokes for hair texture. Because the polychromos are a harder pencil, um, then the Prisma colors, they're perfect for getting to um, getting them sharpened up to a really nice point and putting in very fine detail. And so when I'm doing this, I'm using like a medium pressure to um, get a very precise little mark on my paper.
and brush away some of my crumbs. Going in and doing a little bit more uh, line work with the um, Walnut Brown Polychromos. I have the Prismacolor uh, black. Nope, sorry, dark brown. Boy, they sure look very similar in this light. Now there, see, you can tell the difference. There's the black. Back in with the Prismacolor Dark Brown. I'm just building up some of the um, values coming in from the side of the cheek, uh, working in from that side of the cheek into the eye. And so now I'm going in right, right away with the Prismacolor um, Burnt Sienna. Um, I'm not going in with the white Prismacolor first. I went straight in with the Burnt Sienna to lay down that thick layer um, for my initial layer. Because uh, this section is a fairly dark brown and the lightest color I see in it on my reference photo is like similar to this Burnt Sienna color. Um, so I skipped the white and went straight in with the Burnt Sienna instead. Now, um, <clears throat> I think I have the dark brown Prisma color. And I'm just adding in some color over the top of the Burnt Sienna. I'm pressing fairly hard here, um, just kind of adding to the waxiness. I'm getting it nice and dark. Now I've got the black Prisma color, and I'm adding in um, some some black where it needs to be a little bit darker.
just adding a little bit more warmth in um, on the section that I had been working on. Um, previously, I'm using the uh, Prismacolor Burnt Sienna here. Um, when I put the darker color in underneath it, it kind of helped me see where I needed to add in a little bit of more uh, warmth up above. I'm just doing some minor adjusting of values. Lots of looking back and forth at my reference photo, squinting my eyes, seeing where um, the values on, squinting my eyes at my reference photo and also at my drawing to see where the values are off. Um, going in and doing some adjusting. I believe that's the raw umber polychromos. I may not have the name of it right. It's the orangey one in the basic uh, 12 pencil polychromo set. And so I'm using that to um, add in some of the the lighter pencil strokes in that transition from the lighter area on the cheek down to the darker shadow area of the neck. Now I'm going to use my blending stump because I don't really want to change the value of that, but I want to soften um, the pencil strokes a little bit so they're not so sharp, so precise. So I'm just kind of going every, over everything with the blending stump just to smooth it out a little bit, um, soften some of the details. And so now I'm going in with the Prismacolor Dark Brown um, for my first layer um, where I'm, you know, using heavy pressure and really pushing the wax into the paper. Um, I'm using the dark brown here because um, this is a very dark area um, along the neck. And I'm going in with some black over the top, again using a fair amount of pressure here to really build up those values quickly. This sure beats 12 layers just trying to get it to even look halfway black, right?
I smooth it with my blending stump a little bit more. Just instead of using um, here, instead of using like a white pencil, um, I'm using the blending stump to to help burnish everything together and really mix those colors and um, push them down into the paper fibers. That way, I don't change the value any by um, adding a different color on top of it. I just burnish. So now I've got the Polychromos Walnut Brown, and I'm using that with a nice sharp point on it to add some of the little, um, just little pieces of hair that are coming off the, the side of the neck. You want to make sure that when you're doing this that you're, you're really random in both the length and the direction of the little hairs so it doesn't look um, like caterpillar legs or something. Now I've got the black polychromos and again just adding in some little hair details with it. Making little clumps. Instead of just little individual hairs, there's some clumps there too. using my blending stump again to soften some of those up so they're they're not so sharp and distinct So now I'm coming down, I've got my white Prismacolor again, um, and this time I'm using the that to put down that first layer of, of wax. Um, I'm working on a lighter section of hair now, coming down onto um, the dog's shoulder. And so I'm putting down just a really nice thick layer of, of wax with that white Prismacolor. And now in with some of the Burnt Sienna of um, the Prismacolor set. Now I have some of the, uh, it's the Prismacolor, Prismacolor either black or dark brown, hard to tell just yet. I think it's the dark brown. Yes, the dark brown. 
I'm just using it to add in some value um, in some of the darker areas. I apologize for some of the weird hand movements that I make in this. I'm um, doing this as a live demo and then have come in and voiced over. And so I'm, I'm answering questions to the people that I'm demoing to um, during parts of this. In this section in the reference photo, there um, is quite a bit of uh, variation between the lights and the, the dark areas of the fur. And so I'm just using um, this dark brown Prismacolor to go in and map out some of those darker areas. Now I've got some of the Polychromos Light Ultramarine um, to um, adjust the coloring in some of the lighter areas. And just going through and putting some strokes down, mapping out the, the lighter areas where the color is a little cooler and not so warm. And I have um, some of the Prismacolor Red, uh, where I'm really warming up some of the sections in here. And now I'm using my blending stump to um, kind of um, uh, burnish everything together to mix the colors.
So now I have the black Prisma color and I'm just going in and building up some of the values and um, where it needs to be darker, just building that in a little bit more. And this point I'm trying to make um, little hair strokes. So um, I'm putting the marks in as if they were tiny little hairs. Now I've got the Polychromos Light Ultramarine and same thing, I'm um, using this to put in some little um, strokes for uh, to represent hairs um, on the light side of, of where things are, um, it's a lighter value. And remember when you're doing your final hair texture like this, the, the last few layers, you want to really be paying attention to um, what the, the hair looks like in your reference photo, um, the direction that it's going in, the randomness of it, and you want to mimic that with your pencil marks. Now I have the Polychromos White pencil and um, just carving out some of those lighter hairs as they uh, mix in and out of where the dark areas are. You can see I'm just slowly building up all of the the values and texture in this area. Now I have the, um, I believe it's the Burnt Ochre uh, Polychromos Pencil. <clears throat> and the, um, is it the Brown Walnut, Walnut Brown Polychromos? I'm just placing in tiny little marks to represent hairs. Remember, we use the polychromos um, mostly at the end um, because it's the, the pencil, the binder in the polychromos is harder than the binder in the uh, Prisma colors. And so the polychromos are great at the end to um, get nice sharp points to put in really fine detail.
I'm using my blending stump in uh, right now to go in and soften up some of those pencil marks so they're not quite so stark. Now I'm going in with the Polychromos Light Ultramarine and um, cooling off some of the warm areas that are just a little bit too warm. Now this is a Prismacolor Black. I'm just putting in some uh, darker value areas where it needs to be a little darker. Just helping that edge look a little bit more accurate. As I get to the the finishing stages of this area, I really like to um, you know s step back a little bit and look at the the whole um, section that I'm working on or looking at the section that I'm working on as a whole and um, checking my values. Um, I squint at my reference photo and I squint at my drawing um, to simplify the the areas of color so I can see if I have my darks dark enough and my lights light enough, if my edges look correct, um, all of those things and, you know, go to help um, further the illusion of um, it being three-dimensional. And here I'm going in with uh, Prismacolor um, Burnt Sienna and putting down a really thick layer. This is my first layer, so instead of the white Prismacolor, I'm going in with the Burnt Sienna because that's the lightest color that I see in this area. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a nice thick layer of that down and then build the color up from there. So I can't tell just yet if that is the black Prisma color. I think it is, yeah. Either black or dark brown. I think it's the black. I'm just going over and adding in, um, I'm using fairly heavy pressure here. Um, not as heavy as I did with the Burnt Sienna, but I'm not using light pressure and I'm just adding in value to the areas where it's really dark in this section. I'm going back in with the Prismacolor Burnt Sienna. I'm still using fairly heavy pressure. Back in with some more Prismacolor Black. I'm 
more uh, burnt sienna, I believe that's what that is. Yeah, from Prismacolor. And now I'm going in with some white polychromos. I'm going to carve out some lights in that section. As the, the hair transitions over into this dark area, the dark and the light hairs will kind of interlock and go back and forth. And so that's what I'm doing with the polychromos right now. Um, with the burnt ochre here as well, I'm um, going in with like white and the burnt ochre or a uh, color from the polychromos to um, make that transition between the lighter hairs and the darker hairs. Again, you really want to pay attention to your reference photo when you do this so that you get, um, you don't end up with something that looks too uniform or it's like a straight line or, or just, you know, you really want to be very careful how you um, put the the colors down. Really look at your reference photo. Here I'm putting another, um, I'm putting in another section of white Prismacolor down to um, start um, the next section that I'm going to draw. So a nice thick layer of white Prismacolor so I get all that wax down there so I can um, use it to help blend all the colors I put on top. So I'm going in with some of the um, polychromos burnt ochre over the top of that white and I'm using the polychromos here just for the color. This isn't a final layer, this is just building the color that I need. So you can see I'm using the side of the pencil, not the tip, like I, I'll use the very tip of the pencil when I'm doing the final layers where I'm trying to draw texture. At this point I'm just laying color down. And going back in with the uh, light ultramarine from the polychromos and just laying some down over the burnt ochres to, to help get the right color. I've got some black Prismacolor here. I'm just putting down a fairly light layer of the black Prismacolor where it's a little bit darker in this section. Just making, um, building up the value a little bit darker, especially as it transitions out of that, um, the shadow there between the, the neck and the shoulder. I'm not pressing super hard. I'm just, um, bringing up a, you know, bringing it up a little bit darker as it curls over into that fold, the skin fold between the neck and the shoulder. I believe that was black. That might have been dark brown. Yeah, I think that's dark brown. Sorry.
just continuing to build up the um, values, paying attention to um, the edges uh, as the, the, the fur um, folds over um, into the, the um, crease between the shoulder and the neck. Um, and it goes into the, the dark um, fold there. The, the hair and the skin as it's curling over into that dark fold, the edge is like a, a gradual transition from light to um, dark where it's no longer having the light hit on it. And so paying special attention to that edge is what creates that illusion of three dimension. Um, and so really just, you know, when you're looking at your reference photo and you see like a, a change between colors or how light or dark something is, their values, ask yourself, is that edge um, hard or soft or firm? Like, you know, how, what is the, the quality? What are the qualities of the edge so that you can emulate them? And that will go a long way towards um, creating that, that the, the depth that you're looking for in the texture. I've got some burnt sienna prisma color here. I'm using it looks like um, medium pressure to add in some color. And some more dark brown. And that's about it for this session. Um, I'll continue to work on it and keep recording and um, we'll be posting part three soon. So happy drawing and I hope uh, you're having fun drawing along with me.